Hi guys, so we're going to start the maths core paper, paper one, from November 2019, and this is for IEB, okay? Importantly, always read your instructions, right? I know sometimes it's a bit irritating, um, and they seem quite generic, but they're still important, right? Especially to make sure that you have a paper that has enough pages. Um, particularly important in paper two is to make sure that your um, calculator is in degree mode. It's particularly important for trig, right? And I'm talking to the AP Maths students mainly here because in AP Maths, we put our calculator into radians. So important there, okay? Then it says here, um, show all calculations, not a problem. Um, and then it says round off to one decimal place unless otherwise stated, okay? So that's important and it's only the final answer, okay? Other thing here, um, when, when we're given a, another sort of number to to round off for decimal places it's often two right and that is particularly relevant when it comes to finance right because currency always has two decimal places okay then it just says basically present it as best you can okay let's just jump into the paper now no worries okay so Paper one um, always starts with a question to do with factorization and sort of manipulation of roots and demonstrating that you understand some sort of basic algebraic notation, but also its application. Okay, so let's just jump in and go for it. So it says negative two is one root of the equation. Okay, and they've given us this equation and we can see that k is an unknown and x is a variable, two is a coefficient. Okay, importantly, right, when it says one root, it means that it's a zero. Another word for a root is a zero, okay? What it means is when I plug negative two into this equation, right, an equation means that there is two sides to the equal sign, right, um, then this side equals zero. So basically, it satisf satisfies this equation, okay? Then it says, given that information, prove that k equals negative six. So... What we're going to do is we're going to use our root of negative 2, sub it into there, right? And then our only unknown will be k. And then it'll be easy to figure out, right? Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to, let me actually just write out this uh, equation first before I start subbing in so that you know what I'm talking about. Now we know that at x equals negative 2, right? It satisfies the equation. So sub in negative 2. Right, wherever you see an x, okay, you've done that, um, and then you solve, right? So that's 2 times 4 minus 2 plus k, which is 8 minus 2 plus k equals 0, okay? So now we see that this is k equals negative 6, okay? So now we've done what they've asked us to do. Okay, we've proved what they've asked us to prove. It's very important, they're never going to ask you a question they haven't given you enough information for. Okay, so don't panic. Try and make sure that you understand the words that are being used, right? It's so important in maths to know what the words are and what they mean, okay? Because that gives you a clue as to what you should do. Okay, let's now move on to the second question, where it says, determine the other root. So we know because this is a quadratic, right? Quadratic, meaning that it has its highest degree is two, right? We know that it should have two roots, okay? And we know that one of them is negative two. So they're just asking us to figure out what the other one is. So, right, we have now 2x squared plus x minus six, right? Important to write out what we have, right? They've put it in this order for us so that we can actually now do the second question because we've done the first question, okay? Order in maths questions is very important because often they build on each other, okay? So let's now factorize this. So we know, right, that one of the factors has to be x plus 2. Now you could be saying, but Margie, why is it plus 2 when it says negative 2 over there, right? Remember, when we write a root, we say x equals negative 2. Okay, that's how we write a root. You say a variable equals a, a specific number. But when you write a factor, you have to bring it over to this side and make it equal to 0. So this is a factor, this is a root. It's important to know the difference. Okay, so now and there's many ways that you could get this, okay? You might just do trial and error kind of thing. The one way I'm going to do it, which helps me check it, right, is I'm going to do synthetic division. 
right? And you might be thinking, like, what is that? Okay, um, it's a specific way of finding factors, right, with polynomials. You can alternatively just put this into the quadratic equation, which is put, um, which is on your formula sheet, right? If you want to check it, that's okay. You can do that. I'm just going to show you an alternative, right? I want to give you some options. So synthetic um, division, right? What you do is you put the root. So I'm putting the root at negative two, we know. Then you put the coefficients, right, of the polynomial. So here, that's my x squared, that's my x, and that's my constant. Then what we do here is we always bring this down, right? I'm showing you a technique here. Then for this next thing over here, we say two times negative two, that's negative four. So that's going to give us negative three. 1 minus 4. Here we say negative 3 times negative 2 gives us 6. So that is R. Now we know that when we divide this polynomial by this factor, right, we get this polynomial, right, 2x plus 3. Okay. So, oh, sorry, 2x minus 3. I forgot my sign there. Okay, now you could be saying, but Margie, like, why, why does, in this x squared, why in this x squared column does this become x? Well, because we're stripping out, right, 1x over here, right, so then the highest power in this other factor is going to be just to the power of 1, okay? If you don't like this method, that's okay, put it into your quadratic formula, um, otherwise do it in your head, I'm just giving you options, okay? Cool, so now we know that these are the two factors. So we know that the um, two roots are negative two or x equals three over two, okay? You can check that on your calculator if you put that into the quadratic formula and then you'll get the answer. But I wanted to show you a way of doing it via maybe sort of like a non-traditional approach. You could be thinking that's a lot of work for two marks. Yeah, maybe that's right. But I just wanted to give you an alternative, okay? Let's now move on to B. Now, B is one of these ones, the examiners seem to love these questions where you put the variable in some sort of root, okay? And often as a student, you're like, ooh, I see fire, but that's okay. It's for six marks, okay? So it's quite a lot, but that's all right. Let's just put, let's just manipulate it a little bit, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, let's first write it out. I sometimes find that writing it out is a little bit therapeutic because you don't know exactly what to do. And as you write it out, sometimes things spring to mind. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this guy to that side, right, just to make him a bit positive. And then I'm going to bring that guy this side. Okay, oh, I'm just changing my signs up in here. You see, you must be careful. I'm sometimes a bit sketchy with my signs. Okay, so... Now, if we want to get rid of a square root, right, we do this lovely thing where we square it. But what is important, guys, is that when we square something, when it comes to algebra like this, right, you have to check your answer at the end. Because what we know when we square something, right, if I square 2, right, and if I square negative 2, gives me the same answer, okay? But if I put a, a, a negative back into my original equation, it might actually not work out. But because I've squared it, I've made it work out, okay? So what we need to do, whenever you see, whenever you introduce a square, I always want you to check it at the end, okay? It's very important. So let's now just multiply this out because it's easy. We, we're just gonna do some well, it's not necessarily easy. That's not a fair thing to say. It's just more straightforward. We've made it easy, easier for ourselves to do this question. So let's square it. Remember, when you put that on the, on the outside, you're squaring each thing because this is just one term, right? So that's that. That side was at least a little bit um, uh, <laughs> sort of simpler to do than the other side because this one, we have x minus 2 and x minus 2. So let's square that all out. Sometimes my signs are absolutely shocking. Okay, let me just, I hope I did that correctly. Okay, so basically what I'm doing, guys, is I'm just manipulating it, right? I'm manipulating it to help myself 
find out what needs to be done. Okay. So now let's bring this all onto one side because we know that we can then factorize it. Okay. So x squared, that's going to stand by itself because there's no other term that is like x squared. So then we get negative 4x and we have to subtract 9x from it. So that's negative 13x. Okay. Then we have plus 4 and we're going to have to take away 18 because it becomes negative when it comes to the side. So that's negative 14. Okay. Now, this is... Uh, thankfully, is relatively easy to identify the factors we need because we know that 14 times n or negative 14 times 1 is going to give me negative 14, and negative 14 plus 1 is going to give me negative 13. All right, so we can say here x minus 14, x plus 1, and that is how we factorize it. So we know that our one root is 14, and we know our other root is negative 1. But what did I say over here? I said we, when we introduce a square, we have to check our answers. So let's check them, right? Let's put 14 into our um, original calculation there. Let me check you can see what I'm doing. Oh, goodness, I don't know if you could see that. Okay, sorry if that was a bit um, unseen, just... If you weren't following me, just what I did here, times it out, and then I just um, factorized, okay? So let's put it back into our original. So we have 14, 3, 14 plus 2, which is going to be 14 minus 3, square root of 16. What is the square root of 16? It is 4. 14 minus 12 equals 2. So we know that 14 works, right? Because it equals that side. Not a problem. Let's try with negative 1. So negative 1 minus 3, negative 1 plus 2. Okay, then we get negative 1 minus, so this becomes just 1, right? Because negative 1 plus 2 gives us 1. So that gives us negative 1 minus 3, because the square root of 1 is 1, which gives us negative 4. So do you see that negative 4? doesn't equal 2. So this one is not valid. Okay? Very important. I'm just going to write here so that you see what I did. Okay? So it's very important when we square something that we check it. And that's why it's for so many marks. You could be thinking, why is it so many marks? Because you have to actually check that your roots are valid. Okay? You have to check and demonstrate to the examiner that you understand the math that you're doing. Okay? So that's that question. Let's do the last question of question one, and then we will be done for with this one. Okay, here what's interesting is they've introduced an inequality. Okay, inequality sometimes can cause a little bit of havoc, but it's all about just understanding what they are saying. Again, it's like one of those things, like when we see letters or when we see numbers, they tell a story, right? And what we're trying to, what they're asking us to interpret is they're saying, can you tell the story back to us? Okay, so um, let's tell them the story back. Okay, so they're saying, where is this less than six? But that's not that easy to figure out. So let's just bring the six this side. So effectively, we're saying, where is this negative? Right, where is it less than zero? Or where is it equal to zero? Right, what is less than zero? Negative. Excellent. Okay, let's just factorize it now. Not, not too uh, difficult to factorize. We can use um, negative 3 and positive 2. Okay, remember negative 3 times 2 gives me negative 6, so that's that. Then negative 3 plus 2 gives me negative 1, and we get the coefficient of the second term there. Okay, so now we found our critical values. Our CBs, not our curricular vitae, our critical values. So our critical values are 3 and negative 2. Okay. But we don't know. We, they're asking us what intervals, right, of the inputs into this equation give us a negative. That's what they're asking. So let's draw a timeline. Okay. Here's my timeline. You might want to do it in a different color. This one you can't even see. Okay. And I'm going to put my critical values into my timeline. OK, 
okay? But we need to find out where it's negative. So I'm going to try a value here, I'm going to try a value here, and I'm going to try a value here and see where it's negative, okay? So let's try 0 there, let's try negative 3 there, and let's try 4 there, okay? So let's plug it in. So for negative 3, you can do this on your calculator if you want to. I'm actually just going to, I'm going to write it out just because I want you to see it, okay? So I'm going to say negative 3 squared minus minus 3 minus 6, okay? So, sorry, my alarm just went off, guys, but I'm sure it will be fine. I'm just going to continue. So that's 9, right? And then that's going to be plus 3 minus 6, okay? So that's going to be 12 minus 6, which is going to be 6, okay? So we know here it's going to be positive, right? So that's not what we want, right? So we know that this is not this side of the interval is not what we want. Let's try 0, okay? Then if we say 0, let me just make sure you can see what I'm seeing. I can say 0 squared minus 0 minus 6, right, which equals minus 6. So we know that here is what we want. Let me just use some color so that we can see what I'm talking about. So between a negative 2 and 3, we know that that's what we want, okay? Let's just try 4 now and see whether it's positive or negative. So we say 4 squared minus 4 minus 6, right? And let's figure out that 16 minus 4 minus 6, which gives us 6, okay? So we know, right, that that is positive, right? And we don't want anything positive. We only want negative. So our answer, our interval that meets the conditions is where x is less than 3, less than or equal to 3, and greater than or equal to negative 2. The reason I'm using the and equal, that little line underneath to show that I can also equal those, is because our inequality said that it could equal 0 or be less than 0. It equals 0 when it is 3 or negative 2. Okay, and that is why we get that interval. Okay, so this is 14 marks. It's about 10% of the paper, right? Didn't take us too long, but there were a little, like a couple of tricks there, right? If, if there was anything that you weren't clear on, I would really go back to, my, to your notes and maybe revise a couple of things, right? But this is a great question to sort of just get a little bit of a refresher. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Let's move on to question two.